All right, well, I've got a question, actually, that we can just lead off with while Michael looks for those. But uh, I was this is something that just came to my mind, and I just kind of wanted your perspective, I guess. I think I know where I stand on it in, in regards to the, the issue, but we just got back from Mexico, and, you know, there's the border crisis they talk about. They talk about all these illegal immigrants coming up, and it seems like a lot of believers are either in the camp of we need to welcome all these people in because that's what Jesus would do, or they're in the camp of, well, they're breaking the law and we need to obey the ordinances of the law. And so they refuse everyone. And my question was just like, you know, the, the Bible speaks to this issue. I mean, the Jews were, um, they had laws about foreigners and stuff. And so how does that pertain to this issue? And then how, what do we do as believers? How do we kind of tackle that issue? Well, first off, you know, the Bible talks about the, uh, I'm, actually I'm going through the book of Leviticus. And uh, it talks about in the book of Leviticus that we need to be uh, kind to strangers. And, you know, it's talking about foreigners. Yeah. And so we need to have that kind of heart. But like you, like you were saying, there were kings in Israel, and there's lots of foreigners. Mm -hmm. And so Midianites would come through and ravage their country, and they weren't welcome. And uh, Philistines would come through and ravage their country, and they weren't gotcha. welcome. And so all down, all down through the ages, when you have kings and you have kingdoms, they're... Uh, if if they had a migration of people coming in, then the kings would look at that and they would decide whether or not he wanted those people to settle in those places. And uh, whether you're whether you're talking about uh, ancient Israel or you're talking about any other kingdom down through the ages, it's always been the case that uh, there wasn't just a just a, a free flow of people moving into areas. Uh, without the legislatures, whatever that legislature is, uh, taking care of the situation and deciding whether or not they wanted those people to settle. Mm -hmm. And so it's always been that way. It's never been any other way. And, and so uh, that's something that you need to keep in mind. That is the case with every, every country on the planet right now. Every country on the planet has immigration laws. You can't just go into any country that you want to just because you want to. And, and so this, this idea that um, uh, there's, there, there's something special about the United States having laws that limit immigration is just complete nonsense. Mm. And saying that it's anti-biblical is, is not, it, it's not true to the text either. Uh, you, you didn't have a, have a situation where uh, any Egyptian that wanted to, to live in uh, Israel could do it if they want to, or the Babylonians, or the or the Midianites, or any or you know, peoples like that. They're, you know, you have you have again situations in the Bible where uh, you have have that kind of stuff going on. And so, uh, you know, a lot of times when we're having these political discussions, uh, you have parties that are that are putting up straw men. In other words. Uh, you know, uh, if I was talking to a Christian and they said, well, Jesus said that you need to be kind to strangers and we need to be hospitable and, and that kind of thing. Um, you know, the Bible also says, you know, like you, like you mentioned in mm -hmm. uh, First Peter, it says that we need to obey every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. And so we have laws on the books about immigration, and that's, that's just the case. And so Christians don't have any business disobeying immigration law. Um, if they, if the immigration law needs to be changed, then we have a process for doing that, and the Congress is supposed to change the immigration law. Uh, the states and and the uh, uh, the law enforcement entities are supposed to uphold uh, law. If you don't do this, then what you're going to have is a situation where um, you just basically have lawlessness and anarchy, and that's some of the stuff that's happening at the border. And so there are, there are simple ways to fix this whole thing. And the simple ways to fix this whole thing is uh, by, number one, you keep the laws that you have on the books. That's, that's what the Bible says that you're supposed to do, uh, no matter what the laws are. And so we're not, we don't have a situation where um, we're being unkind to people in the United States because um, they're illegal immigrants. It's not unkind to uh, tell them, you know what, you're not here lawfully and you need to go home. That's mm -hmm. not unkind. Um, unkind would be making them slaves. Unkind would be uh, cheating them. Unkind would be, you know, and some of that stuff is going on because when you have Ill illegal immigration, uh, you have situations where uh, employers are, are paying these people less than 
uh, what is the what is the legal um, minimum wage. And so we have situations like that. And so if you want to if you want to talk about unfairness in, in those situations, that's that's where the unfairness would be. And if we want to uh, open up uh, immigration uh, for people in a way uh, that uh, opens it up to more people in the world, then, you know, more power to us. And we can do that through the through the legislature. That's the way that it's supposed to be done. And so what we have right now is people just ignoring law. Uh, first off, we have we have people making laws that are ridiculous on one level or another because there's, there's contradictory things going on mm -hmm. in immigration law. And then uh, uh, in the second place, uh, we have uh, whole groups of people who want to ignore the law that actually many times their party put into in, into place. Mm -hmm. And so that's just that's just ridiculous on the face of it. And so there's a way to take care of this and there, there's a way to do it in a godly manner. And uh, you know, you can be kind to people, but the whole idea that, that you thwart uh, the, the laws of the United States because the Bible says be hospitable is nonsense. That's, that's you know, I don't, I don't get to thwart what, uh, what uh, the, what the um, state law is. I don't get to thwart what the uh, local muni municipal law is because I've decided that they're interpreting something in a way that's not biblical. Hmm. And so um, I don't get to do that. And, you know, when there are clear passages uh, that speak to these issues, then absolutely. You know, if, they, if, uh, if the government came in and, and said, uh, you need to kill illegal aliens, well, no, I don't. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like the Bible's clear on the fact that I'm not to murder people. Yeah. And, and uh, that kind of situation. And so, you know, uh, again, most of this stuff is uh, just a bunch of political nonsense that uh, parties get into because they, they want to uh, make, a, uh, you know, make a play for uh, more votes or, or something going on at the ballot box. And, and uh, when Christians get involved in this stuff, they need to make sure that they know what the Bible actually says about it and make sure that they're doing what the Lord would have us do. And number one, the Bible says, I'm to obey every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. And again, that's in, that's in the, the book of First Peter in chapter two. In fact, I'll, let, me, let, me read it. let me read it to you so um, that we've got that. Let's see. Da, 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 da. That's chapter three. Oh, yeah. thanks. Here we go. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance. This is uh, chapter 2 and verse 13. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king is supreme or to governors, uh, as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bond servants of God. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. And so um, if, if the immigration laws say certain things, then we are commanded uh, to do what the immigration law says. It's not unbiblical to have immigration law. Yeah. yeah, so. No, that's good. And I think, you know, too, just keeping in mind, like you mentioned, the fact that if it's an unjust law, then you can fight it, you know, obviously mm -hmm. if it's not, if it's against what the Bible says, but to say that, you know, to have a law that is, you know, and it's not even that people can't come into the country because we have laws set up so people can, there's just a process by which they're to do it. Right. And to do it illegally is to, like you said, is to break the law. And uh, I think, you know, unfortunately because of the illegal issue, we have a lot of people who really deserve or have worked hard or try to get into the country that can't because the system gets broken and yeah. it's unfortunate and it's yeah. just one of those issues that I think a lot of Christians, they have it backwards because they, and I think they have good intentions. They want to have compassion on people. They see people coming up in, in droves and they're like, we have so much here. How can we not help these people out? And you just, you know, you miss a lot of the issues and even, you know, just talking to a guy down in Mexico, uh, one of the pastors down there said that, you know, a lot of the immigrants that used to come to United States, uh, there were ones that had like really, they were determined to make a better life for themselves mm -hmm. and they would come here and they would work hard and they, I mean, people that were genuine, like driven and really had, you know, some kind of at least motivating force to make a, you know, their families lives better too. Whereas a lot of the caravans you see coming up, he says that people just 
you know, it's almost entitlement. They come and a lot of them are on drugs and they come up and it's not the same dynamic as what he was explaining to me. And I thought that was interesting too, because that's why you have a lot of the chaos that you have at the border. It's, right, not, yeah. it's not people, you know, just trying to make a better life and just trying to do stuff. It's you have people really just trying to, you know, I would say um, scam the system or whatever. And yeah, you know, a, a lot of times the politics gets involved in this whole thing and, and it's, I don't see it as a political issue. I mean, they make it a political issue, but um, we, you know, we've, uh, you know, we're we're a, we're a country that's basically at war with radical Islam, and we need to understand that people want to kill people in the United States. Yeah. And so, if I'm a government official, I'm watching the border just for that, mm. you know, and making sure that because because that is the the one clear thing that the Constitution says that the federal government is supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be protecting the citizenry. And um, when when we have this kind of chaos in a situation like this, uh, again, and I know these are talking points with, with politicians, but sometimes politicians actually say things that make sense. <laughs> and so, you know, you, you, you don't just open up a border and allow anybody into your country that wants to come in when they want to kill you. Yeah. And so you have to you have to be able to to watch out for those things. And then obviously we've got the drug issue. And I know that that's another talking point, but we have a drug issue. And so, you know, if you if you have a major corridor that lots of drugs are coming through, mm. then it is the it is the obligation of the government of the United States to make sure that again it protects its citizenry. And so that's a that's another reason for uh, paying attention mm. to what's going on on the border. There's a reason that most of the drugs that come into the United States are coming across that border, and the it, the reason is because there's no check on it. It's a porous yeah, border. It's yeah. a porous border, and they're you know they send guys down there, but obviously they're 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 pulling out lots of drugs there, and they're not getting the, getting them all. And so just for those two reasons, you need to have something going on. Uh, with the border, and then on top of it, uh, you know what you, what you mentioned. We've had immigration law uh, for uh, the you know for the whole history of the United States, and so um, my family is uh, is immigrants. I'm I'm a uh, uh, I'm basically a third generation immigrant on my father's side. So actually, my aunts came from Russia. Uh, they were German immigrants into Russia. They had to get uh, permission from Catherine the Great. Oh, to wow. immigrate from Germany to Russia. And then when the Soviet Union went communist, my family emigrated from Russia to China. Actually, they, uh, they went across the border. The Chinese sent them, uh, allowed them uh, to stay there for about a year. And then they went to Japan for two years while they waited for sponsors in the United States. Uh, you know, at, the, at the time, it was back in the uh, 30s. You had to have a sponsor in the United States who would make sure that you were part of a community so that you could take care of your family and uh, that you would have a job and, and that kind of thing so that you wouldn't be a burden, a burden on society. When my family came in, they came in through San Francisco, and uh, you always hear about Ellis Island over in uh, New York. Well, they had the same thing in, in San Francisco. There was, an, there was a place where you came in, and uh, they kept you... Uh, they they checked you out in this place where you first landed in San Francisco, and they kept you there uh, to make sure that again that your papers were in order, that they knew exactly who you were as much as they could, that you weren't sick. And so I had an aunt who was sick, and they almost sent her back to Japan uh, mm. because of the sickness. And uh, you know, uh, fortunately, she uh, she got better, and uh, she was allowed to come in come into the states, but. Again, they had a they whole had a whole community uh, that would take them in, and so that's that's immigration law, just back in the 30s, and and so it was never the uh, it's never been the type of situation where you could just come in at any time and and do anything you want as far as coming across. And again, that's not unreasonable. You try to immigrate to uh, Mexico, and you you know it's like the Mexican government has uh, specific laws and if you don't you know if you if you did exactly what uh, is happening at the border it's not even with Mexicans it's uh, a lot of times it's with Salvadorans and now we have uh, people Honduras, from African yeah. com Africa come up and uh, that kind of thing you you try to do the same thing actually if they try to do the same thing in Mexico they're not allowed to stay yeah 
And uh, if uh, you tried to go into Mexico without the proper paperwork, there, there, you would go to jail. And, uh, you know, there's no two ways about it. And so, uh, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the stuff that goes on with immigration in the United States is just, again, it's a straw man and it's, a, it's um, ridiculous arguments that, that wouldn't bear up on any country on the planet except for the United States. Yeah. Yeah. And so... No, and, and you know what? I, uh, I come from Southern California. I worked in construction. Uh, a lot of my friends in construction were from Mexico. They had, they had green cards. Yeah. And back then it was Mexico. And uh, so they had green cards and they came up. They worked the tails off. I always, I always liked having uh, guys on my crew that were from Mexico uh, because they worked. And mm -hmm. uh, they, were, they were there to make money and they were there to take care of their families. And, and so it's a great thing. But, you know, all the guys that, that were on my crews, they, they were doing it legally and... And, um, you know, it, that's, that's the way that it's supposed to be. Um, if I had a guy come up, come up to me and I knew that he was from Mexico and, and uh, he didn't have a green card uh, back at the time, I, you know, I haven't had that issue up here in uh, Washington uh, so much. Um, but if I had a guy come up and want to come on my crew and he didn't have a green card, the answer would be no. You know, I'm a Christian and I, I need to be doing exactly what the Bible says as far as uh, obeying the laws of the land. And I can still be kind to the guy and uh, be sweet to him and, and that kind of stuff. But he needs, you know, these things need to be done uh, the way that uh, the government uh, decides. And so you don't like how immigration law is? Vote the bums out and, <laughs> and, and do something about it. Yeah. That's, that's how it works there. No, it's interesting you made the correlation between like, you know, being at war with radical Islam and then having drugs come into the country because one of the things that uh, one of the pastors point out because Tijuana is the most deadly city in the world mm -hmm. like has the highest murder rate in the world and he said that it's relatively safe because the murders are all happening within the cartel yeah. basically the cartel that took over after 9-11 he said they or more recently even he said after 9-11 they shut the border down because we did that's what we, you know, when, when an attack like that happens, you secure your borders. He said all these drugs that were coming into Tijuana got stopped there, and they didn't have a drug problem before that. I mean, mm -hmm. they just passed the drugs through, but then they sold the drugs off cheaply to their own people, and it's been an issue ever since. And yep. so it's really interesting. So.